I believe that the general concept of this opportunity card is a great idea, but I do think for most people it's a huge risk to take, and here's why. Now, the German government is launching a range of measures to attract skilled workers from abroad in other news. It aims to combat the growing worker shortage in the country. It is hoped that the points-based system will fill around 2 million vacancies across multiple industries, from nursing to IT to public administration. Finally, after over one year of waiting, the Chance Karte, or the Opportunity Card, has now been passed into law and it has got quite a lot of people excited as this could be another great opportunity for people to move to Germany in search of greener pastures. But the big question is, is this really a great opportunity as the German government wants everyone to think? In today's episode, we are going to take a look and find out what this new visa is all about, who it is for, what are the requirements, how the points-based system of this visa works, and by the end of the video, you'll be able to get to know my personal opinion about this new initiative from the German government. Let's get started. In simple terms, it's basically a job-seeking visa for foreigners who come from non-EU or EEA countries to move to Germany for a period of one year in order to improve their chances of making contact with German employers and find qualified employment in Germany. Please note the phrase qualified employment is important, but more on that later. There are three basic requirements in order to qualify for this visa. The first one being the successful completion of academic or vocational training, which basically means you need to have completed your bachelor's, master's, PhD, or vocational education from a recognized institution or program in the country you studied in. Requirement number two is the language proficiency. If you have watched any of my previous videos, you've already heard me emphasize how important learning the language is in order to help you quickly adapt to life in Germany. You need to be fluent in both English and German. The better or higher the level of language proficiency, the greater the chances of you getting this visa. The last main requirement is the proof of finance. You need to show that you will be able to cater for all your expenses for the entire period that you will be on this visa. The only two ways that is possible is either by getting a declaration of commitment from a resident in Germany or by opening a blocked account with a minimum balance of 12,324 euros. Jeez, that's a lot of money. How important one requirement is compared to another is categorized in a points-based system. But before we talk about that, if you've made it this far into the video and you're finding value from the content, all I ask from you is to leave a like on the video and if this is the first time you're seeing me, a sub to the channel will be highly appreciated. Shifting our attention back to the points-based system, on top of the three basic requirements I have previously mentioned, you need a minimum of six points from any of the following categories. Four points are awarded for the partial recognition of a foreign professional qualification or for permission to practice in a regulated profession such as engineering. That basically means that if, for example, you are a practicing engineer and you are professionally registered in the country you are practicing in, you will get all the four points. If in the last five years you've had at least two years of professional experience that's appropriate to your qualification, you get two points. 
Additionally, if in the last seven years you've had a minimum of three years professional work experience, the two points become three. Remember how we just talked about German and English language proficiency? Well, I'm going to need you to pay a little bit more attention because this is important. If you are currently at A2 German language level, you will receive one point. And for every level above that up to B2 level, you will receive one extra point. So if you are at B2 German language level and above, you will get a maximum of three points. Additionally, if your English language level is at C1, you will receive an additional extra point. So that means if you have a B2 German and a C2 English qualification, you automatically score all the four points. Next, if your specialization falls under the so-called shortage occupation list, basically jobs such as nursing, for example, you will receive one point. In addition to that, if you're under the age of 35 years, you will receive two points. And if you're between 35 and 40 years old, you will only receive one. And finally, if you have had any previous legal stays in Germany for at least six months in the last five years, you will receive one point. Unfortunately, stays for tourist purposes such as holidays or family visits do not count. Before I tell you what I personally think about this visa, if you're an OG supporter, you may have noticed that we recently crossed the 1000 subscriber mark. First of all, thank you so much for the support lately and I really do appreciate it. But I feel I need to step up both the quantity and the quality of the content on this channel. One way I propose to do that is by implementing a live stream at least once a week. That way, if anyone has any questions they would like to ask about living, studying and working in Germany, can do it in real time. If you think live streams would be a good idea, leave a comment in the comment section down below. Also, don't forget to let me know what day of the week you would like us to have these live stream sessions. I believe that the general concept of this opportunity card is a great idea, but I do think for most people, it's a huge risk to take and here's why. First of all, you're being asked to commit 12,324 euro up front for a chance to get a job. There's no guarantee that it will happen. Two, when it comes to getting a job in Germany, most employers say that they want B1 language level and above. That basically means for most professions, you not only have to learn a whole new language, but also have to be fluent at it. Mind you, German is a pretty difficult language to learn, let alone master. Let's not forget the fact that as a foreigner, you are moving to a new country. So that means different weather, food, culture, people, rules, and regulations. So trying to adapt to all of these new changes while at the same time trying to find a job can be quite overwhelming. The fourth reason why I think this opportunity card is quite a risk is that not just any job can allow you to switch from the Chancekarte to an employment visa. The German government has set the minimum standards that a job offer has to have for you to transition from the Chancekarte to an employment visa and continue staying in Germany. This is exactly what I referred to earlier in the episode as qualified employment. As things stand right now, I personally don't think it's the best path to take for most people, especially if you're under the age of 30. Let's say for example, you're 28, you've completed your bachelor's degree, you have about three years of work experience and have an A2 German language level certificate, I would advise you to look for a tuition-free 
master's program at a university in Germany that is related to your bachelor's and come to Germany on a student visa. This is because when you come to study for those two years, you get a chance to fully experience life in Germany in a more relaxed situation because you don't have to go through the difficulties of adapting to a new environment while still under the pressure of having to find qualified employment in just one year. That way, if you choose to stay in Germany after you have completed your studies, it is a choice made from experience. Another benefit of coming on a student visa is that you will get the chance to improve your language because you will get to practice your German in Germany with native Germans. Lastly and most importantly, you will have freedom of choice. What I mean by that is that once you graduate, you can either choose to stay in Germany or to live and go to another place. Everyone who graduates from a university in Germany has the opportunity to apply for the job seeker visa. This visa is similar to the Chancekarte, but without all the extra regulations. Also, this job seeker visa for graduates lasts for 18 months, so you will have even more time to look for a job. If after the studies you choose not to stay, alternatively, you can choose to go and work anywhere else in the world because the academic certificates such as the bachelor's, master's and PhD's from German universities are internationally recognized. So basically, if life in Germany doesn't work out for you, at the end of your studies, you will have a degree to take with you, whereas with the Chancekarte, if after the one-year period lapses and things don't work out as planned, you will have nothing to show for your efforts and your bank account will be 12,324 euros lighter. But these are just my initial personal opinions. So before you decide whether or not to apply for this visa, please continue to do your own research. But keep in mind, it's still early days. And maybe once we get a few testimonies from a couple of people who have gone through the process and found really good jobs, I may end up changing my mind. And there you have it. If you have found this video helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more insightful content. If you have any questions or topics you'd like me to cover in future videos, let me know in the comment section down below. And until next time, bye!